Thank you for joining us today, those that have you that are here now, as well as those that might be watching on uh, the state on the platforms later. I'm very honored to have as my guest today, Mike Milner, who's a local health and fitness coach. And I'm just so pleased and so um, impressed with Mike's approach through his book, his podcast, his coaching on social media. And um, because it's not just about working out, but about mindset, personality, diet, you know, all kinds of insights that I feel, you know, it's like triage at the moment of crisis that we all need to hear from people like Mike. So I want to open this up for, for you, Mike, to kind of, you know, share with us your thoughts about what's most important right now and how we should be proceeding. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Um, you know, I think right now, we probably heard this a million times that we're in unprecedented times, which is true. Um, I think a lot of what's happening um, when it comes to talking specifically about our health and wellness, uh, there's a lot of uncertainty, which creates anxiety, which creates stress. And, uh, you know, one of the biggest disruptors for our health and wellness is stress. And uh, there's obviously a lot of situational stress right now. And it could come, you know, it can be uh, in different forms in that we might be in a position of working from home, which we're not used to, or homeschooling kids, which we're not used to. And um, so I think right now, ultimately, you know, in a time of uncertainty, I think one of the best things that you can do is try and create certainty around your day uh, because we can't predict what's going to happen in a month from now or two months from now or three months from now, but we can control what we do on a daily basis and we can control um, our schedule and um, how we're taking care of ourselves. And um, oftentimes that can be one of the first things to go in a time of, of you know, crisis. And it can be, you know, I'm going to put everything for myself on the back burner while I take care of everybody else. And um, it may seem like that's naturally the best way to go about it, but it's almost like the, uh, you know, when you're on an airplane and they say, you know, put your own mask on before you secure anybody else's. And that's really the mindset that we have to take is um, if we're taking care of ourselves, then we're able to be more present for the people that need us. We're able to be the best version our, of ourselves for those people. So the first thing that I like to, to tell people to do is try and create some certainty around your schedule around the next 24 mm -hmm. hours um, and give your brain that kind of predictability that it that it craves because we want you know, we like to have things that are that are known, that are predictable. And when that's been kind of taken away from us, we can get it back by saying, all right, I can't control next month, but I can control what's in front of me right now. Um, and that might be just, you know, creating some sort of a, a morning routine or, uh, you know, doing something, going outside and going for a walk or, um, you know, being paying more attention to, to what you're eating and, um, you know, the, the movement throughout your day or prioritizing sleep, um, you know, prioritizing ways that you're managing stress and, what I like for, you know, looking at the individual, I don't like people to, to take on too much because that can actually add stress. If it's like, all right, I'm going to, you know, do all of these things. I'm going to be more active and I'm going to eat well and I'm going to manage stress and I'm going to get more sleep. That can be overwhelming and can actually have the adverse effect. So I like to start with like, what's one small thing that you can do today that will make you feel better? And um, something that I actually got from uh, Tim Ferriss was, Look at the domino that if we knock that one down, then some of the other yeah. dominoes will fall as a result or they won't be as important. Um, so for me, it's like if I start my day on the right foot, that knocks down a lot of dominoes. If I start my day and I immediately reach for my phone and I start scrolling on social media, I'm already on the defensive. I've already put myself in a negative mindset. If I can start my day with, you know, some some mindful, you know, 10 minutes of meditation or just drinking some water and getting some light movement in and, and starting my day on a positive, um, that kind of takes some of the other dominoes where I'm more likely to get my workout in. I'm more likely to pay attention to what I'm eating and it kind of has a trickle down effect. So I always look at it as what's the one thing that you can do that will uh, really set the tone for the rest of your day. That's beautiful. And you know, is it's sometimes we hear is that type of thing. I know for me, in the first couple of weeks, I was in a not doing so good, you know, like a little the home office thing was different. And and I got tired of it. So I finally made a decision to get dressed for work every day, for instance. <laughs> and getting back to the water and in, in my little yoga routine and whatever in the morning gave me more energy along with meditating. But the lack of structure I found or just different. We're realtors, we're self-employed, but um, and so I'm always in sort of an unstructured environment in a way. But yeah, on, I honestly did watch more Netflix than I should have and so on. And so then I, I decided to 
like I was saying, stop, drop and roll and take a whole new approach. You know, what am I going to do through this? And then it, then it builds energy and excitement. Yes, I don't know the future, but now I'm, you know, I'm doing new things like this, uh, having guests on virtually because we can't do things in person. Um, and, you know, doing my best just to maintain that positivity, which comes first through that morning, what I put in my body and what I do, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And you brought up a good point, which is that in the beginning, you were kind of trying to find your way, which uh, we all need to be operating with an enormous amount of grace right now, because this isn't something that we've gone through before. We we didn't have the blueprint on how to deal with, deal with this. So um, I've seen a lot of people who actually are pretty hard on themselves because they're not doing well and then they feel bad about not doing well and now you're adding more pressure onto yourself as to like why am i struggling with this well you know this is a new situation that it takes there's an adjustment period so um operating with grace is very important in understanding that uh you know just because you didn't figure it all out from day one then that's okay um but again taking the approach of something that seems very tangible getting yourself kind of that easy win um in whatever version that looks like for you it could be you know starting your day with with some more water or going for a walk or um you know doing some more uh, mindfulness activities to, you know it really just depends on on what feels right based off of your lifestyle and your schedule um, but i think that um you know trying to figure it all out it's okay that uh, if you haven't been doing well if you haven't been you know getting in any activity if you haven't been eating well it's okay um that's nothing to, to be ashamed of or it's nothing to feel bad about um it's just uh you know having that awareness now that okay now we can take the first step in the right direction yeah i think you know you hit the point i was on a webinar early last week and they're talking about what is your your unique voice and i realized i wanted to be a little bit more vulnerable and transparent because in my life i've been through a lot of change a lot of what you might call crises you know with health crises and different things but um, so for me, I can adapt, you know, and my personal journey is not as scary because I've been dealing, dealt with many situations throughout my life that were unknown or scary or, you know, things way beyond my control. It just boom, you know, including uh, health challenges and so on that were completely unexpected. But this is unprecedented, as you said, you know, it's not like we can look back on our our personal experience to say, okay, I'm going to cope with this this way because I went through that when I graduated from college and I was looking for a job. You know, there's so many aspects and there's so much, uh, I don't call it like unknown long tail effect of the shutdown as well as the virus, uh, the economic effects, the personal effects and so on. So that can just be, and the news is overwhelming and it's scary and nobody you get mixed messages and there's different rules and regulations county by county as well as state by state so you know two things that had come to my mind was one is stephen covey's circle of influence and circle of concern which is exactly what you're saying what do i have control over you know what can i work within and then you'll let i have a weird sense of humor but the other day in the shower the movie image that described how it feels i posted on facebook is like when arnold schwarzenegger drops in from <laughs> it's a terminator you know yeah. it's like being dropped into an alien reality naked and then you stand up and you go what do i do you know where yeah. am i <laughs> yeah exactly yeah no it's well said and i i think that um you know even what you talked about with the news being overwhelming and the misinformation and that's where um, setting parameters around what you're going to consume and even when you're going to consume it and you know and that can be something that's just very simple like you know set boundaries as far as you know where am I getting my information from and when am I going to allow myself to you know like I said starting first thing in the morning um, if I reach for my phone and and that's how I start my day uh, you're putting yourself in that defensive mindset you're already starting off kind of on a negative um, you know, setting the tone for a negative day and uh, or, you know, setting something in the middle of the day where you're like, you know what, I just want to stay informed. So here's what I'm going to do from, you know, 12 to one or whatever. I'm going to allow myself to consume some of this information and and setting boundaries for yourself can be um, important. So that way we're not constantly just checking and checking and, and you, know, ang you know, creating even more anxiety around something that we really don't have control over. So uh, being intentional uh, about what we what we consume that goes beyond just what we're putting in our bodies or how we're moving our bodies, but it goes to, uh, you know, what we're feeding our minds as well. 
I, I agree. I, I decided to get my news through the late night comics on YouTube. <laughs> and then I'm laughing and getting informed at the same time. Yeah, exactly. But Michael, um, to switch gears just a little bit, I'm fascinated by the personality diet, your, uh, you know, your approach with tying in health and fitness, which ties into clear, clearly you have a good in, insight into mind, body, spirit. Um, so you want to tell us a little bit about what about your new book? And yeah. I'd love to hear about it. Yeah, for sure. So really the objective is that, uh, you know, when it comes to nutrition, when it comes to health and wellness, um, it's very nuanced. It's very, uh, you know, it's it's based on the individual. And I think that uh, there's been this kind of message in the diet industry in particular, which is like, you know, that there's potentially this one way of doing things that everybody should be doing, which is um, very far from the truth. And we have statistics to back this up and that most diets are unsuccessful and uh, they have a 95% failure rate, which is not very good. So um, I tried to approach things from helping people filter all of this information through their own personal lens so they can have a grasp on um, how can I take this information and then decide if it's the right fit for me. Um, because the, the question isn't what's best. The question is what's best for me. What's going to be the most sustainable? What's going to make me feel my best? What's going to you know get me the result that I want? Um, ultimately, uh, health and fitness and wellness should all be in alignment with your lifestyle. It shouldn't be something where you have to um, you have this internal struggle and overhaul everything in your life just to, to be healthy. Um, so I, I'd like to think of it more as a process for having more of an effortless adherence to health, um, where we're actually aligning, looking at your personality type, looking at your lifestyle, looking at your habits. Um, how do we start to like factor in all of these individual variables and then start to put the pieces in place? And it, and it is a step-by-step -step process. And um, I talk a lot about mindset in the book because I believe that that's where it all begins. I think that um, we often view health as a start date and end date. And really, it's a lifelong pursuit. Um, there is no finish line. And, and sometimes that can be tough for, you know, it's human nature to want the instant gratification or to want the quick fix or to be able to see the results, you know, right away. And um, unfortunately, that's not that's not the way that it works. And um, being able to shift to that mindset of, uh, you know what, I'm, I'm in this for life, so I might as well take the time to, to do it the right way where I can actually uh, sustain what I'm doing um, and, you know, start to put some of these things into place without feeling um, so restrictive and, and actually feel like it's complementing my life versus taking away from it. That's excellent. And just so you know, there's links below in YouTube and Facebook of all, for your podcast, you know, your, your book on Amazon, um, as well as your website. And how do you approach coaching people now during stay at home? Are you taking on new clients? Yeah, we actually have been fortunate right now um, where we're, we've still been, um, still been growing through this. Um, I think that uh, the, the community that we have has really been uh, the glue that's, that's held it all together. Um, we've, uh, you know, in a time where people are isolated, um, we've really kind of leaned in on the connection, um, doing more calls, doing more things like this, getting Zoom calls scheduled. Uh, we actually just um, planned for like a virtual paint and sip night where we're going to have all my clients on, we're going to have some wine and, you know, and, and again, it's about understanding that health is not just nutrition and, and training, yeah. that there's so many other components to it. So, you know, for me, it was like, what's the thing that people need the most right now? It's, it's connection. And, um, and, you know, that's, what we've been able to provide. So we actually have been able to take on new clients. And um, the approach is very is very person dependent because there are some people right now who do have more time on their hands. And um, mm -hmm. there's some people right now that have less and they have you know different stressors. So it really depends on on the person, on how we're approaching it. Uh, for some people, you know, it's like we can actually be more intentional right now because they have more time. They're like, yeah, I want to try cooking more and I want to, you know, learn some strategies on how to make healthy food and healthy recipes and stuff that fits, you know, that then I can carry this on, you know, once things kind of go back to normal, whatever normal is going to look like after this, but um, they can carry that with them and try to find, you know, some silver lining throughout this whole process. And then there's other people where life is just so crazy right now that we're just trying to trying to maintain um, and understanding that like we're, we're going to put that in perspective as uh, it's not an, it's not a bad thing to just kind of get through it 
you know, sometimes it's like a, it has a negative connotation and for like, we're just going to get through it. Um, because if you're not progressing, then it can feel like we're not, you know, then, then what's the point, but I'm um, just trying to frame that in a way that it, it makes it feel like success because it is, uh, if we get through a stressful period of time, um, and we can keep our head above water and, and get out the other side feeling, uh, you know, in a better place, um, that's, that's going to be a huge win. So for some clients, it's really just how can we manage stress as best as possible? How can we simplify things when everything is hectic? Like what are the little areas that we can control and can we use things like, um, you know, like a 30 minute workout or, uh, some nutrition tips as your anchors, as the constants, when everything else feels out of sorts, you have these, you know, two to three anchors that, you know, those are going to get done regardless of what else is happening. And so, um, it really depends on the person, but for the most part, uh, you know, we've been really fortunate with, um, how we've been able to coach our clients through this period. Well, I can tell that you really take that holistic approach. This isn't just about putting together a workout plan or putting together a specific diet for someone, but it sounds like you take that real holistic approach to see like what's going on and what's going to be most helpful in putting together an action plan for your clients that will help them, you know, move forward. Um, yeah. yeah, that's the only way that, that I believe that it works is to really understand the whole person. And, and it's funny because when I was talking to a friend and I told him about the virtual paint and sip and he's like, so wait, you're encouraging your clients to drink wine? Like you're a <laughs> fitness professional? What is this? And I'm like, we have to understand that that health is so much more than just, you know, uh, looking at this dichotomous, uh, you know, good versus bad food or good versus bad drinks. And um, we have to really look at, at the whole picture. And uh, for, for certain periods of time, uh, connecting virtually with a glass of wine is the best thing for your health. And then there's other periods of time where we, you know, where it might be better to uh, focus on something that's, you know, more more water and vegetables and protein and stuff like that. But um, understanding the big picture is important. Uh, a lot of times we have this myopic view where we think of, you know, oh, a glass of wine or a beer is, is bad, but it really depends on on the context and, you know, how is that serving you? And, and so I think that, that that kind of holistic approach is, is really the only way that works. Uh, that sounds good. Now, do you, um, do you have any suggestions for somebody that does has no home gym set up and they're trying to figure something out, you know, during this time. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of resources right now for like home workouts. Um, but what I would say is like a starting point is walking. It's like one of the best things that we can do for our health as far as, you know, um, our heart health, our hormonal health. Um, you know, there's so many benefits, uh, cardiovascular health, reducing blood pressure, all of these things, these benefits from just walking, um, that would be the place that I start is making sure that we're staying active. Um, so it doesn't have to be a lot of people think like, well, if I'm not sweating, then it's not worth it. But um, really, the best place to start is is walk and, and get more movement throughout the day. Um, as far as like actual workouts go, uh, you know, there's some some companies out there that are doing that are putting out a lot of resources for free online, which is great. Um, I know that like Peloton is doing and then even some of the local gyms um, will have stuff like a uh, lifetime fitness is where, where I belong and they're putting stuff out there. So I would look at if you belong to a gym, they're likely doing some virtual online classes. Um, otherwise, there's some, you know, bigger name, you know, brands like Peloton and Orange Theory. Um, or you could just look on YouTube, which is, you know, there's going to be a ton of at home workouts and, and ways to stay active. Um, I'm a big believer in move your body in ways you enjoy. So for some people that might be yoga, for some people it might be more like cardio kickboxing, for other people it might be strength training. Um, there's plenty of options for any way that you enjoy. So just mindful movement. Uh, but the best place to start is really just making sure that you're you know getting some walks in throughout the day and staying active overall. I guess that circles back to your, the beginning of our conversation when you're talking about structuring your day, right? You know, so all of those things are available, but they can be kind of like, you know, we might just scroll through them like we do Netflix. But if we set aside that 20 minutes in the morning or that 30 minutes in the morning to actually do something and then maybe vary it one day, go for a walk, do another yoga. But it sounds like that, that one thing that you said, like the book, the one thing yeah. really comes down to that structure, right? 
Yeah, yeah, and I, I did a, a lot of research on on habit creation, and uh, that's one thing that is pretty clear from research is that the more specific, the more likely it is we're going to do it. So if I were to say, "All right, I'm going to go for a walk today," uh, there's no spe- you know specificity to that. But if I say, mm-hmm. "I'm going to go for a walk today at 9 a.m.," well, now I'm more likely to do it. And even better would say if you actually attach it to another habit that already exists. So if I can say, I'm going to go for a walk today at 9 a.m. after I finish my morning coffee, well, now there's a trigger from a habit that already exists and I'm more likely to accomplish that. So um, there's different ways, you know, when I, when we talk about structure and putting in, you know, a schedule, um, there's a reason for it. It's because we're more likely to actually follow through with it. Excellent. Well, um, is there anything else that you'd like to add or do you want to talk a little bit about your podcast? Um, uh, the guests that you have or the next one you have coming up? Yeah, sure. So the podcast is called Mind Over Macros. Um, may, people might not be familiar with what macros are. Um, I was very specific with how I titled my my podcast. Um, so macros are basically a way to like track your nutrition. So if you wanted to figure out uh, what am I eating in a given day? Uh, macronutrients are how we break down calories. So it's either, you know, it's broken down into protein, carbs, and fats. Um, a lot of people in the nutrition space uh, teach macro tracking. So it's like, I'm going to give you certain uh, number of how many grams of protein, how many grams of carbs, how many grams of fat. That's what you're going to try and eat in a given day. Um, and it's a very valuable tool, but um, I always believe in the mindset first and then we can get into more of like the the nuanced you know macro approach so uh, it's called mind over macros meaning start with the mind and then we can get into something like macros or whatever the, the right approach might be for the individual um, but the podcast um, I typically do three episodes per week I've been pretty consistent with that um, I have a lot of different guests I'll do some solo episodes which are usually just I have something that's on my mind. I want to share it. So I get on the mic and I record. Um, those usually do pretty well. Um, I you know, tend to get more like abstract and philosophical in my solo episodes. And then I'll bring in some some experts in um, different areas of, I, you know, I've had uh, psychologists on, I've had, um, you know, sports nutritionists, I've had, uh, you know, uh, registered dietitians. I've had people who are in, you know, more of the like elite side of coaching pro athletes to coaching bodybuilders. Um, so I've, I've tried to, to keep it pretty well-rounded. And again, my whole theme is like, it's about the individual. So hearing the different perspectives um, helps to understand that, well, all these people are talking about kind of different approaches depending on who they're dealing with, what their client base looks like um, to hopefully get people out of the mindset that there's like this one size fits all. And that's really the objective of the podcast as well as the book. Well, excellent. Thank you so much. I know your time is is very valuable and I appreciate you checking in with us today. Uh, for anybody watching, you know, again, please, where's the camera? Like link below. <laughs> I've got all Mike's links, you know, posted there and I'm sure he'd love to hear from you. Um, and then you can also post questions. I'll make sure if he doesn't see them, we'll forward them over to him. And uh you know, please, please take care of yourself. That's the first thing. First and foremost is our, our health, mind, body, spirit, health, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, and I appreciate that. Yeah, I, I answer all of my DMs or private messages on Facebook. So if anybody has questions, they can uh, absolutely, you know, shoot me a message. And I'm, I'm always happy to help. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And I'll look forward to staying connected virtually with you. And I am very inspired, Mike. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. Well, please take care. And uh, until next time, I'll catch you on your podcast. All right. Sounds good. Okay.